Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Good morning, it's one of those pre-work days where my gimbal likes to be crooked and I like to get a couple of uh, things done before I go to work. Let me show you what I've got in the shop this morning. The never-ending 85-250R is in the shop, but we're going to do that later. Why work? on my longest owned three-wheeler when I could work on other things. Okay, so I got these three. Needs a spark plug. We put that in the uh, parade in my hometown on the 4th of July, Independence Day. And uh, it was hot and it started running like garbage at the end and now it won't even start, so I think it fouled a plug. So we're gonna start there. This needs a plug also. Ordered a plug through Amazon like last week sometime and it was supposed to be here and it's not here. So normally I would order, normally spark plugs across these machines are interchangeable across a number of models. And uh, I've showed my cheat sheet here before. But the TRX90 is the only one that takes a CR7HSA similar to a 70 but it's got that a i don't know what the difference is maybe i'll look that up so i don't stock a bunch of them like you would a br9es or a dra esl like those are super common and then does anybody else save their old ones like they're going to use them why you're not going to use them just throw them out <laughs> i should tell myself that right anyway so i don't have a plug for that yet but I'll probably just stop and grab one today because I'm tired of waiting and I want to get my girl riding again. But I will get that on a trickle charger. Battery is low. This guy, uh, I haven't done really anything to this after getting it. There's a couple things that need to be done. The, uh, the brake line needs to be installed. Brakes need to be, you know, fluid put in and bled. I have a fairing. That fits a first gen 250R, so I think I'll put a fairing on this. Uh, these, this is a neat thing. It's a set of tubing that has grease on it that uh, apparently connects the, the Schrader valves on the forks. So I guess you could, in one spot, let the, the air out that has accumulated. But I don't think that's necessary. So I'm going to remove that and go back to more of a factory look. But fairing that brake line, maybe a little, little buff on the fenders. These are looking a little dull. Probably should get some decals. This one's a little too far gone. No idea why these holes were drilled around the perimeter. I, I, don't have a good first gen with with nice OEM fenders. So that's gonna be uh, my projects for the next couple mornings. Obviously spark plug change isn't gonna take any time at all. But we'll probably start over here to make room and get that done first. But just to show you what I'm what I'm dealing with here. Not gas. Nothing. Let's see what a spark plug does. You might ask, what does a big red take? I know what it takes, but I'm just going to show you how this works. Very common plug. Good to have a bunch in your supply. DR8 ESL. Look at all the machines. There it is. So we're going to take one of these guys, pop her in there and see if it makes a difference. Here we go. Well, that didn't take long. It just occurred to me, though. I didn't really explain why everything's got a tag on it. We just had a, a charity event at my place Saturday. 
and uh, had everything labeled for that. So this machine was bought in Palatine Bridge earlier this year. It's all original, unrestored. It was one of four variations. Sold in 1987. It was formerly owned by the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department. Traded back into the dealer in 2003 or around then. And then sold again to the gentleman I bought it from. And this is the spark plug I just pulled out of it. As you can see. Yucky. Okay, so. <clears throat> what was in it? BR8 ESL. Very good. It's always curious to find out what spark plugs show up in what vehicles. Alright, no choke. Does it start? Easy. That was a true uh, cold start. You know, I didn't test it. And the idle's great. So, as suspected, it was just a spark plug issue. But while that's in here, I think I might just do a little, little wipe down, a little detail on it. Make it pretty again. And uh, this thing we prepped the other day. I didn't really show much on it. Put a new seat cover on it. It is for sale. This I'll get the trickle charger on it. And maybe we'll start on this. We'll see. I don't know. Don't know yet, but we'll see where we go. Well, as they often do, one thing has now led to another. And, uh... Hmm. I'm just now noticing that. So, okay, uh, let me back up. I got distracted. Handlebars are rusty. I needed grips. Uh, I had a new aftermarket front brake reservoir that the previous owner had bought that was he was putting on. So we're going to have a mix of new and, and rust. And I figured it wasn't too much of a project just to pull all the controls off pull the bars off they're true I believe you know sand them up a little bit hit them with some fresh black and then that got me looking at the headlight bezel I had this split here and there's a lot of a lot of tension in that a lot of internal trauma there's a crack here so I've got a plastic welding gun I've used this before you've probably seen uh, my buddy MRC Builds used one of these. They're great to make a repair from the backside. You know, you're left with a visual seam, but if I can draw that in and stabilize that so it doesn't travel all the way up, that will be the desired outcome. Um, and I get to keep the original uh, bezel. I should actually check to make sure the fairing doesn't negate the need for that so i'll do, do my homework on that um this is the grip that came off it who knows what this is i know where it goes there we go you know this is rusty too it's funny how how these uh were put on so apparently that's what i'm missing on the other side because this mounts let me hold all this this mounts like this so this little rubbery grommet goes in that hole that side must be missing so I've got some searching to do these brackets that are about to fall off mount to the underside of the triple complicated little system there this ring is banged up. I don't know if that's the same as a first gen 200X, but I'll do some searching on that. Just want to make it as nice as I can since I'm here. It's a it's an accomplishment to get this thing here, you know, because oftentimes I get packed into my my room and here's my good buddy Pat Doherty messaging me this morning. It was his birthday yesterday, 42 years old. Happy birthday, Pat. 
got a lot of stories with Pat on three wheelers. This three wheeler. A lot of my good stories from high school start out. So this one night, Pat and I fill in the blank. <laughs> but anyway, I think I'm gonna have to wrap it up for this morning, so I'm I'm kind of documenting where I stop. So that's running. Need to put a little detail on it. This is on the trickle charger. I'll get the uh the spark plug for it. Looks like it's taking a charge, so that's good. And uh that's where we're gonna leave it. Okay. So we've got a, a CR seven HSA CR seven HSA plug. Empty box. I'm standing where the TRX ninety used to be. This is what I pulled out of it, a C7 HSA, so no R. So that's, I believe, a I don't know what this is. It doesn't, unless I've typed that wrong. I don't know. C7 HSA. So that's an ATC 70 plug. Oh no. I might have that wrong. I think this is an ATC 70 plug. So no R. So I believe it means no resistor. This plug in that machine would make it start harder. It was always kind of temperamental. But she was definitely she was definitely bad. That machine smokes a little bit. Not that my kids have been hammering on it. I think it's in good shape, so maybe it saw some abuse from the previous owner. But I took the Big Red for a little ride with the kids. My son was on his recon. Palin was on the, the 90. When we revved it up, we had a little mud fall off, so we got a little sweeping to do. I have sourced uh, these valves. They still make these. Um, I looked up part numbers yesterday. Uh, 23 bucks or something a piece. So I said, you know what? Let me see if my buddy Ethan Bennett has some. He is a guru when it comes to first gen R's. And sure enough, he did. He had this plug for me. Uh, no, I had that one. He had one for the other side. So I can set those aside. I remembered I had this sitting on the shelf because I had sourced this from a guy in Canada. Uh... I don't know that I gain anything from that or the lens, but I think the, the plastic is better. So I did zip a couple heat staples in there to secure that crack. I'll do the same for this, and then I'll probably put this back on the shelf. It does have the decal, but some scratches here. This, I think, is in better shape. So I'll do a little swappy swap there. You know how we do. But it is the next day before work, so we're going to get after it and see what we can do. So, two of the three machines in here that I brought in are done. I'm just trying to think of what's next. The 250R is going to leave me with something to do after a minute. Um, that fat cat needs a battery. My forks are leaking oil on, on my 350X, so those need to be looked at. There was something else. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of something else. Oh, my 250R. That didn't start the other day. I want to bring that in and put the new petcock on the tank and give that a once over to see what the heck's going on. But that's where we're at. And of course, eventually we got to get back to this guy, split the cases on the motor and do the rebuild, but that'll be in a minute. So here we go. And down the rabbit hole we go. So <laughs> I pulled the bars because we're going to clean those up and make them pretty again. But then I'm thinking 
how can you put pretty bars on not pretty triple trees top triple maybe with a you know a deep clean and some some special sauce you make that look nice but look at this lower triple she's rough she needs some love so i'm going to pull this fender today i'm going to pull the whole triple setup out and uh freshen it up and then we can start going back together i had to use a little heat because one of those lower triple bolts this lower guy was wasn't really interested in moving too much for me but coming together but i just uh had accumulated some stickers that i need to to put up my pal mrc build sent me a couple He's got a promotion going on for a membership. Apparently, YouTube membership is a thing. And uh, you can go to subscribe. Well, it's you can become a member of his channel. I might be doing the same thing. I don't know, but I'll let you know. Oh, Captain Wheezy, this is the guy. He's in uh, Missouri, I believe. He sells parts, but he also at one point owned my suspended 200S. Previously owned by PJ Hart. Previously, previously owned by Captain Wheezy himself. None of us would be uh, here if it wasn't for the guys at Three Wheeler World. They, they're they the ones who started Trike Fest. There's a core group of guys there that were instrumental in, in kind of putting the groundwork in for the modern three wheeler movement, if you will. Maybe that's a stretch. I don't know, but it sounds good. And our buddy Chris Philby. I've had the sticker kicking around. These some of these came out of my closet. Sometimes things end up in the wrong place, but I need to put this up to remember my buddy Chris. Great guy. Miss him a lot, but we're gonna throw these up on the door. I'll save you the uh I'll save you the agony of watching me do that. I'll show you the end product though. Okay. Three wheeler world. The MRC down there. ADTATC. If you ever need anything there, Jesse Meyer, Meyer USA, Spec Bolt. I get Spec Bolts from my buddy Greg Jr. Vinny Staffa at Power Sports Surplus. Old Paul Anderson, Retro Off Road, sent me that sticker. I forget where those came from. Somebody made those up. Chris Philby. Captain Weezy. I put the other uh, MRC builds over in that window but look at this man we keep falling backwards and backwards pulled the tank i've never been into one of these much so it's interesting to watch or to see what the technology was like in 1981 versus 1985 it was only four years but shoot they came a long way look at this this uh, engine's got a, a drip it looks like hmm not to I'll have to check that out. One thing I did just discover, and I find it kind of interesting, and it explains why this is so rusty, because that's cast iron. Top triple is aluminum, as you would expect, but where these are all aluminum, on a later model, on this first gen, they are cast iron. So I'm masking this off. I'll hit this, blast it, and uh, make it black again. I do a different technique than my buddy MRC Builds does when pulling bearings. I didn't record it, but what I do, and I've got it tipped up so it's not going to show, but imagine this tip down sitting on my jack. And so the, the steering stem and the, the triple sits over that box. So I remove the, the triples. And you can see the little dots of grease where the bearings fall in the box. And then you can collect them without losing any. But I did have two go for a ride. But you can, at that level, you can count the dings you hear and you know, okay, I got to find two. And I found one over here. And I still need to uh, double check to make sure my count is right. And I'll report back on that later, but that's all we got for now. 
that's how this uh, project is going. It's going to be good to clean this up. It's got some dirt on its underside. We'll make her pretty. We'll catch you tomorrow morning. Well, a little update. We've got some, some parts hanging here. Pulled the skid plate, which I'm going to need to grab because I'll show you in a minute. But in the other room here, we've got the lower triple is drying. I'm actually going to move that in the sun so it can cure. I did the final coat of paint on most of these. So we can do some assembly, but before I assembly, I'm going to clean a little bit. Get this uh, schmutz off the off the underside here. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It is Saturday. Hopefully, we can do some assembly later this evening. Over and out. Well, a day has passed, and I'm out here with a much more clean underside on this R but I'm noticing some things like that spacer looks quite nasty but I've just cleaned the other one and I've got a kind of quick way to do this and it involves a piece of t-shirt that has been cut and uh, I'm basically treating it like floss So all I've been doing is just kind of using some 303 protectant, but it's also good for cleaning. So I'm just going to feed my, my t-shirt strip in through here and floss. And I know this really isn't critical to this what I'm doing here but uh you know I had it apart and it's a lot easier to get in and do this now than it would be when it's all assembled it's actually going to need some scotch bright I think that one looked about the same beforehand but it shined right up this is like gum. I'm going to continue to detail and then I think I'm going to get my, my lower triple put back in with the bearings. So I'll pick up with you when we get to that point. I'm just going to clean a little bit more, get the underside of those fins. Just make this nice before we stick it in the mud hole, you know? All right. We have finished cleaning. I'm happy with what it is. I know there's patina or wear or whatever on things. So we're going to start assembly. And the wear is Hello. me and these guys. Nice shirt, Bennett. Yeah. Who made you that? Kim Dwyer. Kim Dwyer. And Palin's got her Trike Fest shirt on. So... I think what we're going to do is just put some time lapse in to show the process. We're going to put our bearings back in on our triple. We'll start with that once we get the uh, triples on. We'll put the forks on and, and just start reassembly that way. So without further ado, let's go.
boy Bennett learned about bearings. How many top and how many bottom? 18. 18. That's what it is on this. I don't know that that's across the board. We were one short. I don't know if I lost it or if it was one short from somebody else being in here at some point, but I was able to get a loan bearing for about $2.15 from my local dealership. So, Bennett, why don't you pull that tape off? So we had just masked this off. Uh, you know, there's a, a more appropriate way to do this, but this is what I did just because this is not a show bike. This is not a high-end restoration by any stretch. But now that the lower triple is on, we will get to the upper triple. I just threw some heat staples in to finish this off to stabilize a crack that had been creeping up. The end product shows a seam. Let me cover Bennett's face so it'll focus. It shows a seam, but it's stabilized and will hopefully keep itself together. I'm opting to use the bracket, that, or the bezel that came off the machine other than this one because uh, it really, that one has some negative about it. I figured this was better to, to use what came on it. But let's get back to work. So a little update. We're coming together nicely. I got to put the fender on. Uh, I got to get the controls ready for handlebars. Then I can cover it up with a headlight. But the switch, this is the switch that was on it. It was busted out on the side. And a while ago, I had sourced a switch that was in better shape. And it was all assembled here a minute ago. I figured I ought to give you an update. I never noticed that these were all chewed to crap. 
So, you know, the brown and, and this white are okay, but those look so bad. And one of these was pretty crispy at the end. But the other wire looks really nice. So I'd like to use that. So I was, I was investigating how to do that. And I've got a bunch of spring-loaded pieces here that you know, this pulls out. That's the old one. So if I can get those spring-loaded pieces to set in here correctly and slide the other, slide that one in, I'll be back in business, but that's going to be tricky. So uh, wish me luck. That's where I'm at now. But I wanted to give an update. All right. Over and out. I have a recommendation. Do not ever take one of those apart because you got a spring, a little tiny spring on this side with a little insulator piece, kind of like that. And then these two copper looking staples that I don't know where I had a spare. Yeah. So these. These sit like that, and then this piece sits like that, and then you gotta load that into there with a spring pushing against it, and then you gotta hold that in and then do something similar on the other side, and then you gotta hold those apart while you slide this gizmo back in. And it is tricky Ricky. Guess what? what? I did it. Woo. So she's excited. Were you eating a bean? Mm -hmm. Nice. You got your trike fest shirt on? Can't see it. Your hair's in the way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're about to screw this back in and finish this job up. That, that was tricky.
We're getting pretty close. Palin's got a hard hat on. Having a little sody for a break. Probably saw in the uh, time lapse that we did a test fire that was more to see that the headlight wiring was going to work, and it did. We have realized, I think this is the brake line that came with us. It wasn't installed, and maybe this is why, because it's too short. So I'll get a measurement on that. This is an aftermarket reservoir and uh, master, rather. Um, I'm okay with that. I didn't get the original with it, but right now we are at the point where we're going to put the fairing on. It's got a clamp type setup that goes down here, clamps around the lower fork or down near the triple, the lower triple, and it's got some through bolts that go through the top triple. Uh, one was pretty rusty, so I've got an assortment here out of my parts bin, and these two shorties are for the the brackets there, but I want to get this on and see how she looks. Here we go. So I had to pull the fairing, the plastic part, off the bracket, and I wanted to take a minute to talk about how Honda did these. So that plastic is the same shape as every other fairing for a three-wheeler that Honda made. What is different is the bracket. So this is the bracket for a first-gen 250R. It is specific to this model. With this bracket, you can mount that. With a different bracket, you mount to other things. So it's got kind of a clamp style bracket down here. Uh, it has through bolts through the top triple up here. And it's got a couple mounting points that maybe I can get my daughter to hold the camera for me while I put it on. First, I'm just going to kind of hold it in place and get a couple threads in on the upper mounting spot. You'll show the headlight, honey. How the bracket is designed to center the headlight on all these different models. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably do a video at some point on just the the uh the various mounting styles because like a 110 for instance has a very unique bracket that moves the uh the headlight up and out to allow for the fairing to work on that machine Some of the hardware is pretty specific. So if you lose it, you might be hard pressed to find it. I don't know if it's used in other places, but like a bolt. Well, our battery died when we were recording there. So I just finished things up to uh, get it done. What can you tell us about this three-wheeler, Palin? What do you know? Uh, what year is it? 1981. 1981. What model is it? 250 something. R. 250R. Okay. Is this uh, the first year of the 250R? Yes. Yes. So, just a little history. 81 was the first year 
of the uh, two-stroke three-wheeler offered by Honda. Honda's entry, you know, official entry into the sport three-wheeler game. They offered some cool accessories like this Honda line fairing is what they're known as. And I kind of dig the look of it. <laughs> Are you modeling, honey? So, uh, each fairing came with the clear windshield or the the low-rise black plastic like that. And uh, that might be the better application for the, for this machine being its sportiness. But uh, this fairing in particular didn't come with that. <clears throat> I do believe I have a spare one of those. I gave one away to PJ Hart. Um, I guess we traded for his windshield. But... That concludes uh, what I wanted to get done on this. As you recall, we had the, the 87 Big Red in the shop uh, beginning of the week, and that just needed a spark plug, and I cleaned it up a little bit. That's running nice now. I had my daughter's four-wheeler in the shop. We put a new spark plug in that, and uh, you okay? Okay. Put a new spark plug in that, and uh, that runs great. It had a, the wrong plug in it. And now this thing's running, running good. A um, couple things i got to fix. The brake line is too short, so that is just sitting there for appearances. Some things I'd like to do are pull the foot pegs and straighten them. They're both bent like that, so I don't know if there was an accident and they got bent or somebody did that on purpose, but I would like to straighten them out and maybe hit them with some paint and make them nice again. The fenders aren't perfect. They've got holes drilled for what reason, I don't know. It's got a fiberglass fender on the front that is not correct. So those are some of the things I've noticed, but I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So thanks so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you. There's my daughter. But I think I might try to do this more. I'm out here pretty much every, uh, every morning before work doing stuff. Sorry, I'm doing stuff and I, I don't capture a lot of it, but you guys might be interested in those sorts of things. I'm just trying to get more of what's behind. One of the things I got to do is split the cases on this motor for the 85 behind me. I'll get to that. But I've got these two uh, 81s in here that I might do some swappy swap on while it's still decent temperatures. But again, from my garage to your garage, thanks so much. From Palin and I, have a great day great Labor Day, and we'll catch you later.